What is up, my little tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on the streets of Arena. Ah, that's super awkward. My power went out mid-pack one. And so we are jumping in here at pack two, where we had a really weird draft. I'll try to go over it super quickly here. Um, but I apologize for jumping in into the weird draft. Some technical difficulties. So here we are. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all of your magic card needs. So I opened a Breach the Multiverse, pick one, pack one, and then saw basically no good black cards. Basically no good black cards. I started taking some random cards in a bunch of different colors, and then we got a very late Mirror Shield Hoplite, and I was like, okay, maybe we will just jump into red, white, and see if this can work. So again, I apologize. Technical difficulties. Um... I will try not to do this type of thing in the future, but we basically missed all of pack one here. So we're starting at the beginning of pack two, and we have a decent start. As you can see here, we have quite a few actual good red-white aggressive creatures. Um, I'm not sure how many of these I'll actually end up running, but we're getting a spite here for our third pick in pack two, so that's not a bad one. The nice thing about... Um, Red white is that oftentimes nobody else is in it, right? So you can really get the mirror shield hoplites uh, super late. I think the main thing to remember when you're drafting like a deck like this is you really need two drops. Like two two life link for two is not super exciting, but in this type of deck you're really just trying to, you know, push the early damage through. In fact, I might even end up running this Ramosian great sword. Ooh, why don't we try out playing Zada as well? Zada's a really fun one, uh, especially in red-white where you get things like aerial boost and like coming in hot and stuff like that. So again, I apologize for the late jump in, but we're going to have to make do. Uh, this is best of one ranked. We are diamond one. So if we do well in this draft, we can make it into Mythic at the start of the season. I would guess we would make it into Mythic with like in the top 10. There will not be many people in it. Pick 7 Realm Breakers Grasp over Shadow the Source is great. Pick 8 Realm Breakers Grasp also great. I like it over Smite for sure. And even though Arrest Effects aren't super good these days, just there are so many ways to negate them. Um, or creatures coming with abilities so you don't get the full value. I still think it's worthwhile. Getting a Valduck here as well. I don't have any equipment except for the Greatsword, though, so... This might be a pick where Dreadship is actually better. But I'm willing to take the Valduck. I guess it has higher upside. Like, what equipment would we really want to run? I think the Greatsword is fine. The core... Um, Halberd is fine. I think the best equipment is probably Beat Stick, if we can find one of those. Sunder the Gateway is completely reasonable as well. 2 mana 2-2, two, two, worst case scenario, but then there's a lot of upside if there is a relevant artifact or enchantment on your opponent's side of the board. Yeah, I opened Breach. I got super excited uh, in my initial recording. And... Uh, yeah, you can imagine my my despair as we see and get no good black. All right, I might run the um, Mirror and Bone Splitter here as well. It's not crazy bad. Bond Warden also okay. I mean, look at that. We're, this is the end of pack two, and we already have 23 playables. I use playables lightly here, as there are some cards that aren't great, but playables nonetheless. <laughs> and we're opening a SRAM, Senior Edificer. That's actually really good in our deck, isn't it? Aura, Equipment, or Vehicle. Well, if you look at it, we have like three or four of those total. We have two Auras, the two Realm Breakers Grasps, and then we have two Equipment, so... This is more than just a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two in our deck. It's a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that sometimes draws a card. Getting past a Glissa Herald of Predation makes me feel really bad, but... It's okay. Sometimes the, this is the way things go. We have a Daxos we could take. This is like the fourth or fifth great sword we've seen. Random 2 2 flyer. We can take the heal slasher for. I don't like that. This is my least favorite backup creature, I think. 
think Daxos is probably the choice. Somebody's going to be really happy getting a Glissa. Ooh, there we go, there we go, there we go. I'm going to take the Invasion of Gobacon here, and I would expect the Mirror Shield Hoplite to wheel. Invasion's actually extremely good, especially in a deck like this. How many backup creatures do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so yeah, we do really would like that uh, Hoplite to come back around, but Invasion's just really solid. Let's take the Intervention here over Sensor. I think Sensor can be really good in red-white, but oftentimes you're trying to cast multiple spells a turn as well since you're so low to the ground. But any white deck always wants to have access to at least one Intervention, I feel. Invasion of Belanon is surprisingly decent in this type of deck as well because you can apply early pressure and Antheming your team is so good, even if it has 5 loyalty. There's a boost. Gosh, Slinger, Boost, Third Grasp, Scrounger, Dreadship. Again, another really, really good pack for us. I can start cutting some of the more filler cards here, I think. I guess the Valduck's probably going to end up being a cut because I can cut the... Uh, the two bad equipment since I don't have the good one, right? I don't have the, the beat stick that I was talking about. I have really come down on a lot of the land cycling cards. I still like them, but I don't think I actually want them in a deck like this. So I'm just going to rare draft because I'm a fool. Oh! Can I play City on Fire? Do I have enough creatures for that? It's a little bit questionable, and we don't have as many red creatures as white creatures, which would make this better, but I'm going to give that a... I mean, there's nothing else in that pack anyways. Let's see. Barrage is okay if we wanted to play that. Didn't wheel anything good here. I guess I might play the Heal Slasher, though I'm hoping not to. Did somebody take the uh, Hoplite, or is it the next pick? Ah, somebody, somebody took the Hoplite and they they passed the Botanical. I mean, we still get a 2-drop here, which is fine, but... Damn. Looks like green-white was the, uh, the open lane, wasn't it? That's too bad. Okay, now I think we ended up with a decent deck, though. I mean, only one Hoplite's unfortunate, but... Otherwise, we have a really strong overall build. The question is, do I have enough for Zada to work out now? For Zada, I have Aerial Boost, Angelic Intervention. Just two cards. Well, two cards that you would want to cast. You don't want to spite your own Zada. It's high upside, but it's probably not going to work out. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to throw in some amount of the, um, of the equipment package back in. Because throwing the equipment back in will also make SRAM a little bit better, right? So let's move, let's put the Bane Splitter back in. Our creature count is 12 for the City on Fire. And again, the majority of it is white and not red. It's a little bit awkward. Also, we might be, want to run like 16 lands. So if we're running like th 7 mountains, can City on Fire actually be played here? Probably not. Alright, I'll just end up cutting it. That's the smartest thing to do. I don't mind running the Greatsword then. Let's see. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven two drops? Eight two drops? That's good. I'm just throwing a random halo hopper, I suppose. Okay, solid. Solid enough. Classic red white, only one hoplite, but should be okay. And again, we're in Diamond 1, so if we could have a little bit of a good run here, we might be able to hit Mythic. Let's go to Round 1. Okay, Round 1 we go on the draw, and looks great. 
lots of two mana plays and then a couple of top end cards that we can find a few land but we can uh, use the spite to pitch something expensive worst case scenario no plays the first two turn ah preening champion turn three though that's a good one let's see I guess we'll just Invasion of Gobacon next turn, or this turn rather, and we can spite it if we want to next turn. Alright, we are going to take the Inga and Essica here, otherwise they'd be able to cast it. I do think I attack. If they trade for the Preening Champion, that's good. Ooh, they played the card we knew about too. Or we didn't know about, rather. So this is going to be a good turn for us. We get to attack for two. Volcanic Spite the token that they're going to Adaptation. Pitch the Daxos. Nice. Flip our Invasion of Gobacon. Then our Alabaster Host Intercessor is going to grow. And we have a way to protect our creatures. So, attack for two, probably just play out Yorian is their game plan, I would guess. And then I'm going to Realm Breakers Grasp the Yorian. They drew a Vorinclex, because why wouldn't they? Okay. So let's go with Bola Slinger this turn. The Lifelinker is really going to keep us in this race. I get to attack, tap Vorinclex, get in for 4 Lifelink, it turns into a 5-5. Five, five. Then next turn I can make it a 6-6 six, six Lifelink double strike. So I take 8 here, I go to 15. Now maybe they play the Yorian? Maybe they still just go with Inga Nessica though. That's fine, sure. Do they have another creature to play off of these? Sometimes you can't beat the top of your opponent's deck. <laughs> That's just magic. Wow, they did. Oh, that's actually not bad as well. So I'm going to attack with both here, and if they want to eat the Bola Slinger, they take 12. Or I could keep my Bola Slinger alive now. See, they're going to attack and flicker, but I have Greatsword on Scald next turn. So this would turn into a 7-7. Seven, seven. But we know we have perfect information on their hand. Oh, this is fine. Let's let the Bola Slinger die. The Scald holds back a lot of their creatures. Hmm. So they're letting me trade with Vorinclex if they want to. I guess I'll take it. Now the question is, do I want to keep my Scald alive here? And I think the answer is yes. They only have one card in their hand. And because we have the Great Sword, it's just way too good on the Double Striker. Yorian, Flicker, all of those is so sick.
Alright, so we go... Fight. Equip. Attack for 12 double striking. Which means they're going to have to make some really, really poor blocks here. They still need to put four more toughness on that. Or rather, not four, but a bit more. Okay. Nice. Nice. All right. And remember, the Great Sword also gives trample, so Sanctifier is going to be a 10 trampling lifelinker if they don't find anything here. Yeah, triple bottom. Reveal pest. Second Inga in Essica. <laughs> but that's game over. Right? Oh, they get to flip their invasion again, too. Wait, but I can grasp the Inga in Essica. Make it unable to block. No, no, we're still good here. Grasp here. Equip. Kill their preening champ blocker. And that's lethal. They have to throw everything under this. Because that's lethal if they don't. Look at that. Boom, baby. Wow. They had rares, but we had aggression. They had rares, but we had aggression. We'll take it. We will take it. 1-0. Oh. On to game two, where we're on the play. Nice looking hand. Mono twos. Hmm. Let's go with turn two Inquisitor here then. And just plan on flipping our Incubate next turn. They go to 17, 19, 18. Technically, this still pushes one damage in trade for me taking two, right? Because they're going to be effectively at 19 now. I think that's fine. Our deck's trying to kill fast, so I like doing that. Maybe less so when they have a second. Alright, I'll just say Intercessor, or rather, uh, Alabaster Host Sanctifier and pass. Versus Black White, they're probably going to have that um, sculpting perfection, sculpted perfection, so Sunder the Gateway, we're going to hold on to. Or Gift of Completion, for that matter. Ooh, that's good. That gives our SRAM a good hit. Let's attack for three, and if they double block, we can get them. It's nice having nothing but two mana plays in my hand with four mana. Invasion of Tolvada returning their Gloomshot Mauler. Wow. Alright, well, we will kill that in response. We don't want to pitch anything here. We're going to have to hold the gateway for them possibly flipping their invasion, I think. They already surveilled the top, so this is a wasted surveil. Let's lock that up, draw a card.
and I'm going to try to push the pressure now. All right, well, they get to flip their invasion of Tovada, but we held the Sunder, so at the very least, they don't get too much crazy value. They're going to get 1-1-1 one, one, one out of this deal. Alright, I mean, they still have a better board presence than me, but getting rid of the invasion was at least good. Okay, so they have to sack their 1-1. One, one. They probably should have attacked first. Oh, I guess they get to flip it now again? Uh, pretty sick. Just a little bit too many powerful things for me to deal with. Still have a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2 two, two waiting back there. I don't think I can afford to block. I think I need to keep the scrounger alive and get a little bit lucky. Rather the 3-3 uh, three, three alive and get a little bit lucky. Yeah, so we're gonna have to play this and hope we hit something off of the rummage. Because they're just gonna double block. And that's not good enough. All right, good beats. Yeah, they had a fantastic draw. Anytime you get to land cycle into Invasion of Tolvada, it's just so gross. Plus they had the then they were immediately able to flip it. Yikes. Good beats. GG. One and one. Wow, that, that looks like an identical hand to our previous one, doesn't it? Nearly identical. Jeez, okay. Um, sure. Being on the play is super nice, obviously. And this is probably going to be a game where we just run SRAM out on turn 3. Assuming I don't find something better to do. Or I don't want to, like, spite a portent tracker. Wow, yeah, our draw has... All <laughs> this is nearly identical to the previous game line out, or draw out. I'm hoping they don't have a counter here. Hopefully they just land cycle. Good. For their third island even okay they might be a little bit color pinched right now 
Yeah, I'm guessing they're missing at least one color. Three mana pass. Just go to combat. If they went for an Afara's Dispersal here, I'd probably Intervention. Because not only pumping up our creature, hitting them for a little bit more, it would deny Surveil too. Alright, there they go. Okay. I do not believe going for that is correct. I think I just attack here. You have like Crypto Mancer resolves. Targeting that. Alright, we'll go ahead and spite it in response. And we're not gonna pitch anything. I think you could pitch a land if you really wanted to, but that seems like a little bit unnecessary. I'm still just going to hold the land in our hand as well in case they have a rat or um, invasion of Eldraine. Now I will most likely go for the Scald. I expect a chump here. And then next turn, Grasp plus Intervention looking really strong, especially since Grasp if SRAM stays on the battlefield, we'll oh, they didn't even block! Whoa! Do they have a Convoke in their hand? That's... terrifying. The sound's not messed up, is it? All right, now we're just getting trolled. <laughs> nice thing about SRAM, it's a cast trigger. So even if the spell does not resolve here, we still get the ability. I do not believe attacking with SRAM is correct. Because this is already forcing them to make two blocks. And this way I can hold up Intervention and play Halo Hopper. There's no way to, for me to give protection and win here since they have so many different colors of uh, creatures. Okay, that's fine. Yep. All right, we have three lethal threats on the board. They don't have seven mana this turn, even with the swamp. So there's no breach possibility. <sighs> Red-white is always so scary. Every point of damage is, is extremely important. Like, we can, we can talk about how brainless blah 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 aggro curves, curve outs are, but... Your attacks are that much more important. Every single point of damage that much more important, right? Your deck's usually a deck of inches. Not feet or miles, if that makes sense. Uh, I think this is a keep. I think it's a keep. 
turn two invasion of Gobakan into Sigil Sentinels really good, even though we're on the draw. Best case scenario, we find a two drop creature of which we have a ton in our deck. Alright, hopefully we can slow them down at the very least. Oh, good! Good. That is disgusting. Let's take the Protocol Knight. They're just going to level up their Order of the Mirror here. So I'm going to go Sigiled Sentinel. They go Invasion of Xerix and bounce it, I guess. Yeah. I actually go Halo Hopper this turn and play out the mountain and then I can equip and trade here. Weren't expecting that, were ya? Oh, we lost out on SRAM value. Land pass, hold up angelic intervention. Fine. So now we go land or yeah, Slinger here, smack, tap, flip our invasion. And for the rest of the game, we don't need to run out any more threats. They have Sunfall, so we're just supposed to sit back now. They might even fire off the Sunfall at this point. Like land sunfall, yeah, I like it. I think that's a decent play by them. That's actually pretty good. I'm gonna lead on invasion of Belanon here and say go. They didn't animate. Okay. I'm going to let them flip this because what we can do is just spite their invasion of Xerix flipped creature instead. While it's teeny, while they don't have too much other stuff with it. Nice. This is worthwhile because we attacked, so the array is actually going to make it larger as well, past the size of their 3-3. Three, three. That's a little bit annoying. So I'm going to see if they draw a card first. They did. Now we're going to save it and we can flip the Invasion of Velanon. Boom. No dispersal there was great for us. Okay. Uh... They do have good double blocks here, sadly. The Raph is giving us kind of the business. I could trade the Daxos for... 
their 5-5 five five potentially, or their, their golem token potentially, I think that's fine. Incubate token, not golem. Actually, attacking with both of these is good, right? No, they could go block, double block. Well, no, that's probably fine, isn't it? Trade for Wrath and their 4-4. Four, four. I think that's good. Or just trade. Ah, that's bad. They got to draw two and eat. Okay, kind of a brutal last card in their hand, but... So be it. They're one land away from double wrath activation. Remember, that does not kill non-tokens. Rather, that doesn't kill tokens. I'm supposed to do this before they can make um, 10 mana and have access to double pump. Man, brutal. No, yeah, good beats. Nothing I can do about this. Uh, they had a really good draw with a Sunfall and looking like we might have been able to beat it, but not in the cards here. Needed to draw something there. Brutal. Okay, that'll do it. Oh, man. Thought there was a chance we might have been able to win this game, but... Not in the cards. They've also outdrawn us by a ton, so... <laughs> the Valduck's actually really cute. Makes a 4-2. I guess if I randomly rip Aerial Boost and they don't use the Marshal to tap down some, for some reason. Like if they take the 4 here and then don't use Marshal to tap Valduck, I can attack and boost. Or if we draw like our Greatsword, we can make 2 tokens a turn. Oh, right, they can Vigilance the Marshal. Attack and tap. Oh, they all have Vigilance now anyways. None of this matters. I have to trade this. And I don't think we have outs. Do 
GG's. Good beats. Sunfall maintains a card that is very hard to beat. And now I'm all blurry because we lost. Imagine that. Okay, two and two. We are right back where we are starting. D1 with no pips. So I need to win at least two matches before we take our third loss. That way at least I can uh, have gained a little bit of rank. Otherwise, if I lose here, thankfully, I will not go back to diamond two. But let's just, let's just win five in a row and get to, get to mythic. Easy. All right, on to game five. The red, white... Back up, not doing good things. Actually, we haven't even seen our uh, op light yet, have we? Suppose that's a keep. And on the draw, you just have to pitch a land here. We have three two mana spells. We'll draw some more lands, presumably. If we don't, unfortunate. Well, the secret's out. My hand is bad. They might take the prankster. My only thing to do early. Assuming they don't play a creature. Yeah, I love it. Are we going to get glissed is the real question. Ah, that's bad. I'm going to lose the spite here. Okay. Sentinel a good draw. Maybe that can start the beats. Two reasons to keep grasp over spite. It can deal with a larger problem. We also have SRAM to um, maybe get a card back with casting it. I'm going to uh, put the counter on the Bola Slinger itself and make that more of a problem. Oh, they missed a land drop and they did nothing, though. Okay, and we get to just keep attacking. Hell, if I draw a land next turn for Scald, we're putting a ton of pressure on. That's also not terrible because I can cast that after attacking. You want to tap the 1-1 one, one here so that if they decide to chump, they have to chump with their pest. Like, if I don't draw a land next turn, we can go um, equip Greatsword plus Grasp. Salvation. Ah, uh, this has to be deadly derision, right? It's too bad. Okay, well, still right to run out the Scald here. Put this on the Sigiled Sentinel. Yep. Pretty obvious. So, if the Scald lives, it's going to be a very easy win with Greatsword. Can we fade them having another removal spell? We want them to just tap out for some random creature, but I guess they know that I have Grasp in my hand, so... on Timberland Ancient or whatever it's called. Just play your 6-5. That's the best you can do. Pyrexian Gargantuan. Manual tap. Manual tap pass priority fake out. Huh? 
Okay, GG's. I guess they didn't have anything. Alright, and that is very, very much lethal, because this thing is a 6-3 double-striking trampler. Okay, we've gained... Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, we need to win one more before we take a loss, and that way I've gained at least one pip. Three and two. And he convert. Put me on the play. Great. Hands good. Hands very good. Ooh, 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 yeah. We have volcanic spike, uh, spite to insta flip our invasion of Gobacon, too, so. Here's hoping the opponent doesn't have a relevant play here. Red white mirror match. Kenra spell spear. That is, in fact, relevant. Mm. I think I'm just going to spite this now and pitch the Daxos. Rayav as well, sure. Let's take a little peek at what's going on in there. Interesting. Zada with aerial boost, huh? And they have an Elspeth smite. This is actually a tough decision. I guess I take the Zada. I just pass priority. They might pass back. They should know that I know they have boost, so going for this is pretty weak. Okay. That's really good for us, because they're tapped out of white again, so we actually get to go ahead and smack our invasion of Gobacon and flip it, unless they want to chump with their Billy Rider. Nice. It's gonna make a 4-4 Sanctifier now. Oh yeah, let's go. The ripping land. Oh, great draw. So what I'm going to do here is just grasp their Billy. And only attack with my Sanctifier. I don't want to give them a good use of their Elspeth Smite. And this is going to turn the Sanctifier into a 5-5 lifelink now. And so now if they draw a land to slam their Intercessor, I will use the Array to give it Hexproof. They did, wow. Yeah, they've drawn pretty well here, but so have I. Very nice. Actually, if I attack with all of these and they block the 2-2... Two -two, I can hit him for 4, 8, 13. That's not good enough. In fact, no, it's fine to trade it with the Scald right now because they don't have Smite open. We don't want to use Intervention there because it'll still be a 4, 3 next turn for their Smite.
Did they draw aerial boost? Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. They have a solid Zada deck. <laughs> No way am I attacking with Sanctifier. Just gives him the free use of one mana. Woo! 46 life. Sanctifier, Sanctifier, baby. All right, we got that second pip. That means even if I lose here, we have progressed. And isn't that what life is all about? Progression, moving forward. Maybe that's too deep for a uh, magic YouTube video. Who knows? Yeah, that's a mulligan. I... Well, hmm. I'm on the draw. I have a spite. This is one of those hands, though, it's not that I need to draw a land. I need to draw a specific land. So we only have eight planes in the deck. That's too risky. Much, much, much better. I will say, this deck mulligans extremely well, because I can keep a two-lander uh, and just be like, hey, no problem, you know, I can cast all my stuff. Like, look at that, I have four two-drops. So it looks like they had that last turn, but decided not to cast it. And the drinky drink, okay. Will we die to blue-black? I will block. You got me. I think there was a very good chance they were just planning on sacrificing it there. Which is why they didn't attack with the drinker, so I like that block. Even if it didn't end up exactly how we wanted it to. It's not like the 2-2 is extremely important. The only reason the 2-2 would have been nice is because I do have an invasion to potentially... Um, potentially... Uh, pressure. Three top? What is in your hand? Stasis Field and Vanquish the Weak. I will take the Stasis Field. And then what I'm going to do is boost up and flip our invasion. So they can't vanquish it. They can spend the four mana to fully stasis field it. But given that Halo Hopper is my only creature right now, I think this is the right play. Oh, they didn't. Okay, that's nice. Like, I think I need to protect the Halo Hopper at all costs. This is, again, pretty nice for me. I get to lock down their token and attack with Halo Hopper. Which means it will now be a 5-4. And as a 5-4, it stops everything on their side of the board. I think this is correct. Honestly, I might at this point just let them stasis field our Halo Hopper if they do that, because it would turn into a 2-4 defender. <laughs> this is medium beats versus medium beats. I need. I wish I had a flyer in my deck.
what is in my deck. Let's see, I don't know what the land is. So they might be planning on using Vanquish here. I'm supposed to just attack with both of these, right? And now flip in response. Let that happen. I'm okay with the chump. Sure. I still get bigger. This invasion of Gobakan has been an all-star in our deck. Undoubtedly. Again, I'm extremely tempted just to let this happen. I just have a big defender now. They're probably like, what? And now we trade with this, right? Yeah, if they attack, we trade. We're not playing out our lands because we have the scrounger in our deck. Ah! Ah, uh, yeah, we're just going to die to the flyer now, aren't we? I guess I have another spite as well, a reason to keep the lands in hand. Oh, come on, that's three in a row, dude. Boo. Man, we had a nice interactive game. And this is how it's going to be. What do I need to draw? Two volcanic spites. A Realm Breaker's Grasp. We have good draws. Spites are best. Okay. And I'm going to main phase this so that I can throw a land away. And maybe cast something else this turn. There's our Scrounger. I think we hold on to it. Reason is, we have that one of Hoplite in our deck, and we don't actually have any good attacks anyways, and the extra blocker is not super relevant right now. Ooh, I like that. Oh, they messed up. They sacked their Inga. They didn't get to... I, th I think here... I think they thought they were going to get to draw some cards. That was a huge mistake on their part, and now I think we're extremely far ahead. Nice. Gonna turn into a 5-5. Five, five. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. We had a couple good draw steps and they made a very costly mistake. Yeah, once again, I don't even care about that. It's just a fat defender now. Because we go slinger. Put up here. Attack for three. Tap down their drinker. Rummage. And now our Scrounger is going to get larger. It's a little bit annoying, but we can kill it in response to a flip. Actually, maybe we just kill it end of turn for mana efficiency. Yeah. Because we have Rummage anyways with the Scrounger, so... Nice! Woo, baby! I was going to say, even if we drew a land, we'd still be able to rummage it away. Invasion of Gobakan, man. Brutal. Brutal, brutal for them. Hey, five and two. Man, I'm stoked. Nice. If we win the next two, not only do we trophy, we'll hit Mythic. Go, go, go. I, I can taste it now. It's there. On to game eight. We're on the play with a solid hand.
Maybe we can get, do some more Valduck stuff. Mr. Ducky. That is a must kill. Um, I guess we go Prankster plus Hopper here. That's a must kill card that I don't have a way to kill. So. Oh my lord, I need to draw a spite right now. That is what we call very bad. I don't see them blocking either of these at least, so I can push in a bitch up. Uh, <laughs> A bunch of damage, a bit of damage. <laughs> Man, three colors and they get two botanicals. Oh my god! Ugh. <laughs> These both have trample too. Wait, okay, they messed up. I think they forgot that those have trample, so I just gained five life there. Dear freaking lord. I think I need to push. And I don't think I attack with the Goremonger here. But if they take 8, which I'm expecting them to do, then Angelic Intervention on the Scald might be able to push lethal, right? Because right now they only have creatures that are both green and white, so... Protection might win it here for us. I just want them to tap out for some random creature again. 6, 12. Okay. One more random creature? Oh wait, no. Because they don't have any... So we don't want them to actually play another creature with the mana that they have. Okay, green creature. Green creature. Green creature. Please. Play Overgrown Pest. Please. <laughs> okay. I just take the six here. I don't have a choice, right? I just have to go for it. You know what? You know what I could have done last turn? Maybe I should have... Oh no, there was no way for me to multi-block. Can I win if I don't go for it this turn? That's the question. Eight sixteen. They have sixteen trample damage. No, there's no way for me to win without going for it. Alright, so if they have it, they have it. Okay, that resolved. Let's go! Let's go! <sighs> oh, 
Oh god. We would be put to the test, wouldn't we? Six and two. Final match for their mythic. Come on. Put me on the play. Give me a good draw. We have not won the die roll, but we have a good hand. We still have not seen our hoplite. Not yet. We keep drawing a lot of same cards, but not the hoplite. Dreg Recycler on turn two for our opponent. We have a nice two drop, three drop, four drop hand with a removal spell. No blocks there for us. That's fine. I'm okay trading my lifelinker for their flyer if they want. They might not even hit anything worth value. Yeah, two lands. We did mill our intervention, which is unfortunate, as that's one of our best cards in the deck, but... Again, not, never blocking there. The Hermit. Let's go for pressure. They might try racing if they have a land here to level up their Hermit. Nope, okay. Alright! Both players just slam jamming. No! Wait, why didn't they... That's very confusing as to why they did not... play that and then... We need to draw some spells here. If I draw another land, I don't know if I can win. Herbology is really bad for us, too. Sadly, the Instructor ruins our plans here. And they didn't play a land last turn, so does that mean they have two spells in their hand? No! Oh, I can feel it slipping away! Oh, they just have a removal spell too? Yeah. Ah, it's all slipping away, friends. Yeah, flip their herbology, kill my Bola Slinger. all slipping. I'll block the dregs here. Little late to the party there, friend. They get to flip their invasionable growth, though. They still get to cast their rat. Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, the pain, the suffering. Build two more lands off my top. Yeah, GG's. GG's. Oh, well, I will say this. I am very happy we got to 6-3 and three with this deck. I am very, very sad that we did not hit the Mythic rank yet. So, good stuff. Uh, again, like, I apologize for the beginning of the draft since, again, my computer or my power went out, flickered. And so, I didn't miss many picks, uh, thankfully. But we did miss the initial um, pack one drafting. But hey, good stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.